Hi, everybody. My name is Hannah, and this is Pepper and Pine. And today I have a curriculum and homeschool haul to share with you. Uh, before I dive in, I want to show you a couple of things that I got from IKEA. These ones were $3.99, and they are, I think, for your desk as just a way to protect your desk. One side is smooth and the other side is rough. And I thought these would make really great art mats or for watercoloring or just any kind of uh, art projects that you just don't want to get all over your desk. They are really flexible and I just thought that was a really great deal. I was in there for other reasons and I got distracted with these. So I got three of them, uh, two for the kids and then one for the main work area that we all use. All right, so the first box of things I want to show you is from Nature Watch. Today's homeschool haul and curriculum haul is from Dick Blick, Nature Watch, Amazon, and Waldorf Supplies. All right, so a lot of the things that I'm going to show you are actually repeats of things that I've gotten before. We just like them so much that we ended up getting them again, sort of. So these, uh, this is insect lore. This is the ant life cycle stages. And I got three different ones last year, butterfly and um, <laughs> praying mantis and one more. It just slips my mind. And at first I wasn't crazy about them because they are plastic, but then I thought that they make really great kind of hands-on displays for our uh, for our unit when we when we prepare the unit and we display different books and different projects that we're going to do and so because of that i decided to go ahead and get the other ones that were available at nature watch and so this is the ant life cycle and then this is a butterfly life cycle but it's different than the monarch butterfly that we had last time something else that we've really been enjoying are the professor noggins games and so i went ahead and i added to our current collection we have a ton of them really like them let me show you what they're like in case you haven't ever seen these before. They are a, a trivia card game. And so if you don't know anything about a particular subject area, these may be a little bit hard to play, but if you know even just a little bit, then they're really enjoyable. Now we use these cards either to introduce a unit or throughout the unit during our morning activities, or we use them any other time of the year in order to review some of the things that we've done in a previous unit. So this one is on Birds of North America, and you can see that the cards are all really, really beautifully illustrated. This would be great to add some illustrations into a nature journal or into a main lesson book. On the flip side, you have two sets of questions, an easy set and a hard set, and they are either just short answer, true and false, uh, or I think that's about it, just short answer, true and false. And what, the way that we play, oh, and there's a dice for it. And the way that we play is that if I'm a lot more familiar with the topics, then I will do the hard questions and my kids will do the easy questions and then it kind of evens out the playing field. Or we'll start out the unit with the easy questions and then we'll test ourselves with the harder questions at the end of the unit. The only downside to a game like this is that if you've if you've gone, if you've gone through this game often, then you will have memorized all of the questions and the answers. And then it's not as exciting to play because you remember, well, which is kind of good, right? <laughs> then you, you learn and you remember, but that's the only downside to a trivia game. But we have really, really enjoyed these games. And so I went ahead and I added birds of North America, reptiles and amphibians, wonders of science and rainforest of the world games to our existing collection. One other thing I got, actually a few other things, but I got a book on the life cycle of a butterfly and that's because we did a butterfly unit last year and we really enjoyed that unit. We did a lot of hands-on projects with that unit and so I'm glad to add a couple more resources to that unit. And so this is just a really, really beautiful book and I'm really happy to have it. Got a little distracted with that book. A lot of fun. All right, so let me show you the kits that I got from Nature Watch. Now Nature Watch is known for their kits because because these are unique to Nature Watch. And a lot of these other things, especially the Professor Noggins games, you'll be able to find that like at Amazon or other retailers, but they're their kits you're not going to find anywhere else and they're really phenomenal. So the ones I'm going to show you today are actually two of them that we've already gotten in the past and we like them so much we got them again. So this first one is called the Nature Watch Seashell Bracelet Kit and I forgot to mention these are classroom kits so there's actually enough material for 25 students. Now the reason why I like this one so much is that the first thing is that it comes with 
Uh, let me pull this out. It, uh, by the way, I also have a video on this, I believe, and I'm going to link those. Any video that relates to this haul, I'm going to link them down in the description box below. So check that out if you want to. Oh, these are neat. These are actually a little different than the ones that we got last time. Anyway, check out the description box below for more information on Nature Watch as well as the other vendors that I have purchased material from, as well as the videos that relate to these different kits. If I've already done one, then you'll find that link down in the description box below. All right, so I believe last time we had three different colors and it looks like this time you have a white and this multicolored one, and then this one that's a little bit white, but the first time around we had one that was a little bit darker, uh, which is fine. It's nice to have the variety. It also comes with a pound of seashells. Oh, so uh, this is the bracelet making uh, part, part of the kit, and it comes with all the materials that you need. It's really well done. My children really enjoy it. Uh, it even adults will enjoy making them as well. And then it also comes with a variety of shells, which are really beautiful. But the best thing about this kit is actually the Tide Pool samples that you get. These are really, really beautiful. So I'm just going to gently pull these out so that you can see that it comes with all of these different specimens and they're just in they're really good quality it's just it's all very phenomenal it's a tremendous value for the money for this particular kit and i highly recommend getting the classroom kit even if you only have a couple of kids especially for this one and the next one that i'm going to show you because your children will enjoy making these bracelets often so i think it's a better value to uh, to get the classroom kit for these two particular kits. Some of the other ones that we've gotten, it wasn't a good idea to get the classroom kit. I think the phases of the moon game wasn't, it, it just wasn't necessary. Once we did the game once, like assembled the game, we didn't really need to have more of those. This is one that I highly recommend that you get the classroom kit for because you are not just gonna wanna do one candle. You're gonna wanna do lots of them. And the reason why I like this particular kit, um, I've gotten beeswax rolling kits from other vendors. Uh, a Child's Dream is one that I have gotten these from as well, but these, the ones from A Child's Dream are a lot larger. You can certainly cut them down, but they're a lot larger and they are colored like with either brights or with uh, pastels for the spring. And the reason why I like this one is because they're still, they're all natural, but they actually don't smell like beeswax, but still. <laughs> They look like beeswax that hasn't been dyed. Uh, and so, and it comes with all the materials in order to do the candle rolling, which is awesome. But my kids really love sampling the honey and you also get 25 honey sticks. And so that is probably the second biggest, well, there's only two perks <laughs> about this project, but they really, really like having the honey and they really, really like making the candles. The only problem that I have encountered with this kit and other kits that involve honeycomb rolling, candle rolling, is that I still haven't found a great way to burn the candles. It, they just, they, it's just been a, a challenge. And so these are candles that you cannot walk away from ever. Like you have to, you know, be very careful. All right. So this is a brand new kit that we've never gotten from Nature Watch before. It's the seed identification kit. It comes with, with 39 real tree seeds. And I'm really excited about this one because the other, oh wow, oh I'm so excited. Oh that is, these are fantastic. Uh, down below in the description box, you'll be able to see a link to a, a couple of videos, uh, a, an entire playlist of all of the projects or kits that we've gotten from Nature Watch, as well as how I have displayed some of the things that we have gotten from Nature Watch on display boards that have been both decorative pieces for our homeschool room, as well as kind of inviting, uh, I guess, <laughs> educational <laughs> material, because like this is fantastic. Being like this in these little packages, it's great because that means that children can handle these and they're not going to get broken and then it's great for a classroom of course but I wanted something that was a little bit more artistic and so I took all of these and I glued them onto a display board and that way again in classroom art as well as uh you know it's it's informative and educational so that's kind of neat okay so let me put these aside and let me grab some of the things that we got from Amazon 
All right, so this next set of materials is from Amazon. Now, some of these things are also available at other uh, vendors and other retailers. And so I encourage you to actually price check because I'll tell you, Amazon isn't always the best price. And so do look around. Oh, this one's super beautiful. Okay. So this one's a little bit bigger than I thought. Uh, I have projects in mind for all of the things that I have. And I, I admit that I can't quite remember <laughs> what I had in mind for this other than I think that this was going to be part of our nature table for the fall, but I have since kind of altered what I want to do with the nature table but this is still a really really beautiful piece of wood i've used them in the past for the children's uh what do you call them fairy houses <laughs> that's what we use them for in the past as well as to display our candles and other things all right so we got a sun print kit we have used these ones in the past before they're great fun i do not have a video on this but this is for our i believe i'm going to be using it for our physics unit and i'm going to have more on that unit coming up if you want to see the different lessons or rather the main lesson blocks in the uh, unit studies that we're going to going to do this year down in the description box below i have linked are the video which showcases like all the different uh, lessons that we want to do this year just that are plans for the upcoming year and you can check that out in case you're wondering i'm going to try to explain what these different materials are for uh, because i've got a lot of things for our physics unit coming up but first i want to show you this book it's called wings worms and wonder now i couldn't find a lot of pictures of this online like the inside of it but the outside of it looked really inviting and just like the kind of books that i really like oh cool it's color coded oh compost oh, my favorite <laughs> this is a really really beautiful book oh it looks like there's projects in here oh this is fantastic this is just right up my alley as far as like things that i like to do with the kids um with with our nature units which we tend to do in the spring which this year I know our winter is going to be super busy with our history units this year, especially since they're going to be pretty packed. We have Middle Ages and the Silk Road, and they're both really large, lengthy, involved units. But I want to spend some time in nature in all the seasons, not just in the spring. It's just that I tend to save our nature unit studies for the spring because it's a science unit and we tend to be just more science oriented when the weather is fair. Uh, you know, we just want to be outside. We just want to grow our seeds. We, so I tend to save those units for that time of year. But we're in Southern California and our winters are beautiful. They're mild. They're gorgeous. There's just a lot to see. And I want to remember to spend some time uh, doing some of our nature units in the winter. Um, also, we tend to start off the school year with a science unit. And for this year, it's going to be a physics and an astronomy unit for my 11 year old. So I'm going to show you some of the things that we have for that. But I got distracted by this book. It's just beautiful i'm looking at all this the first time with you guys so actually before i show you these i these things <laughs> let me show you something that's super boring uh some double stick tape now i actually didn't need the tape disp dispenser but it all came as a complete package and so this is what i coined the boring office supply stuff of homeschooling supplies so um that was that and i want to show you one more thing before i show you some of the physics stuff um i looked around at a couple different vendors for this following item i honestly i don't know how well or how nice these ones are going to be oh actually these are actually really nice. So these are little wood uh, uh, discs. And my idea was to use my Silhouette Cameo to and vinyl, uh, vinyl paper that's sticky on one side. And my Silhouette Cameo is a digital die cutting machine that you hook up to your computer. You can do any design that you want and then it'll just cut it out. And I thought that I could use the vinyl and do the different letters you know the letters of the alphabet and put one on each of these little discs and this will be for my first grader it'd be a great way to kind of when we're introducing a new little mini unit study or a different topic area i thought that would be a really beautiful way to have a couple of words just you know on these beautiful discs now this is not an original idea i saw this on instagram and uh that that info is linked down in the description box below so that you can go and follow some amazing amazing instagrammers and all of their 
fabulous homeschool inspiration. So that's linked below. That's not an original idea. I'd like to give props to the women who came up with that. And if you don't want to use like the vinyl lettering, you could certainly just use a Sharpie and write on it. Uh, or, or you could even like, um, paint with chalkboard paint and then you could just use uh, a chalk piece of chalk to write the letters. Um, all those ideas are not my own. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to some of the materials that we need for our physics unit. This is a set of tuning forks. Now I'll tell you that I have, I'm when it comes to music, I know nothing. I know less than nothing if that's even possible. And so the acoustics part of our of our physics unit was, uh, which just took me so long to go through because I really didn't know anything. So this is a set of tuning forks and uh, you know, um, is that how you do it? Uh, hold on, let me see. What, how, what do you tap it with? Do you, can I just tap it with this? Ooh, wow, that's really nice. Maybe there's something you tap it with. Maybe, oh wow, you can actually feel that. That is so cool. I have never had a set of these before. And um, you know, this is, this is for my third child. So there must be a tapper. Guys, let me know. There must be something. That is amazing. Oh, I love that. It comes in a really nice box. So that's uh, from Amazon and that is for our physics unit. All right, let's move on to, I don't know what this is. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is so funny. Um, this is a charger for my son's uh, Chromebook for school. So that was fun. Let's go on. Let's move on to some more things. All right. So more stuff from Amazon. This is, I think I'm missing something that goes with this. This is denatured alcohol. It is for a, uh, like a sort of like a portable Bunsen burner, sort of. Anyway, um, that again is for the physics unit. Uh, let me show you this one. This is for a physics unit. I'm super, super excited about this. Oh. Wait, this is, <laughs> this is not what I thought it was. This is very nice, but it's not what I thought it was. This is the, um, this thing, the, the, the stand for like a science apparatus stand. You know, I'll tell you, my major <laughs> in university was chemistry. You would think that I knew the technical terms for a lot of these things. Alas, it's been too many years, so I don't. All right, so maybe those other things are in here. These are more materials from Amazon. All right, so these are uh, flashcards, bird flashcards. Oh, these are so pretty. I got these because I saw some, some different homeschoolers on Instagram. When they would display their units, they had really, really beautiful materials. And some of them, I'm pretty sure, are things that you can get by these different Instagrammers. I think they probably have downloads and PDFs and things like that. But uh, I went ahead and I got this uh, set of flashcards. I believe that Shalise over at Sodbuster Living showed these in a recent video of hers as well. And so, super beautiful. All right, let me pull everything out so that I can show you some of the things that I got here. Aha, there it is. All right, so this, this is a, this is a glass alcohol lamp and, and that, this is really beautiful. And I probably should have gotten more wicks for this. Okay, this is really cool. Okay, this is for our physics unit. And then we had the alcohol as the fuel. And what's really neat about this is that you can have it upright like this, but you can also, I showed it online. Wait a minute. There we go. And you can also have it on its at, a, at an angle, which I thought was kind of cool. All right. So we also have this is the bracket for, or you know, that other thing that I showed you. Uh, we have some. This must have been in the wrong box. Maybe this is with the Waldorf supplies. We have some embroidery needles. That was definitely in uh, the other box. And then. Let me, let me get through some of these more, uh, I'm going to call them boring materials compared to these really beautiful materials, but let me show you. Oh, right. These are different lenses. And again, this is for our physics unit because there's, uh, there's, there are three sections in our physics unit. There's optics, thermodynamics, 
and uh, acoustics or sound. So that's gonna be for that. All right, so I also got a bunch of these little soil pellets and I'll be honest, these are way smaller than I thought they were. I, I didn't think they were thicker, I just thought they were wider. This really looks like um, <laughs> homegrown packaging. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's for some of the nature things that we have planned. Uh, to build a fire, this book was mentioned in the physics main lesson book. We're using the live education Waldorf curriculum, and this book was mentioned, and th so I thought I would have it either as a read aloud or as a side reading for my 11-year-old. And then I got some more nature-ish books for our spring units. This one is called About Birds, and I got it for the illustrations, and plus because it's just a charming little book, but I didn't read it. I just saw the illustrations, and I wanted it. <laughs> so that's how I pick books sometimes. If they have really beautiful illustrations, then I'm really drawn to them. Um, take a long guide. Now, we had some of these last year, and while we didn't use them to read cover to cover, we did use them to reference certain sections that we were studying, and I did end up really liking them even though at first I was like, oh, there's not quite enough information. But then I thought that the illustrations and the little bit of information was good for the units that we were doing at the time because we did... Uh we did just like the monarch butterfly, for instance. So it's not like we needed a tremendous amount of information. Little tidbits from different books seem to work. And so I decided to go ahead and get the ones birds, nests, and eggs, rocks, fossils, and arrowheads. And I feel like I had gotten one more. Um... And I don't know where it is, but also in my Amazon cart was the one for the beaches and I ended up finding it at the library bookstore for a dollar, which wasn't actually that cheap, but I went ahead and I just took it out of my cart and I bought the one from the bookstore because it was cheaper than these. These range in price from $5.50 to about $8 depending on where you get them. All right, so the next book I want to show you is called A Nest is Noisy. Now, I have other books by this author, and they are beautiful. I believe I have A Rock is Lively, and I can't remember the other ones, but they're, they're look how breathtakingly beautiful this is. And so I went ahead and I got all of the ones that we could from this author, and plus, they're just so beautiful. I believe this book, um, actually this one's a little bit different than the ones that we got in the past by the same author, but what I liked about it was that there, it was written kind of for two audiences. There was the really simple, more poetic uh, verses in the book that were just beautiful and so simple and so gorgeous for young readers. And then there were other passages that were a little bit longer. It was great for older students or just students that needed a little bit more information. So I really liked the layout of this book. And then we also got An Egg is Quiet and it, it's it's just so beautiful. It's, I just really, 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 really like these books. So go ahead and, and check out the rest of the ones in the series. You won't be disappointed. All right, let me show you um, the last thing in this box, at least, and that is um, this cording stuff here, and it is called coiling cord, and it is to make these different baskets, if you can see that, and I plan to use our Lamb's Pride bulky or worsted weight yarn in order to do this. This is a really, really, I think, simple project. I... <laughs> I sort of know how to do it, and I think that it's going to be easy enough even for my seven-year-old to do, but I thought it would be perfect for my 11-year-old because he'll be able to do this in no time at all. All right, so let me put these things aside and show you the next box. All right, the next things I want to show you are from Waldorf Supplies, and this is one of two Waldorf vendors that I use often. Uh, a Child's Dream is the other one that I use, but there were a few things that were not at a Child's Dream, so I bought them here. And since I was here anyway, I went ahead and I got a couple other things. And I kind of want to show you the difference in the materials that you're going to find in these two different vendors because uh, I like... <laughs> I kind of like some better than others. <laughs> All right, so the first things I wanna show you are a couple of books, uh, and we have other books in this series. We have, uh, I don't see it here, but anyway, we have other books in the series, and my daughter and my son both asked to have the other ones, and so I am happy that we are able to get these. These are by a Swedish author, and I believe illustrator, I believe she did both, and she lived uh, about 80 years ago, 90 years ago, 
And so we have Children of the Forest, we have Christopher's Garden. This really beautiful, beautiful story and illustrations. And then we have Around the Year. Oh, very nice. This is with the different months. Really beautiful. And then we have one more book, and this one is the Alphabet Book. And this one has these illustrations that, that look like, um, I don't know, they look like 19, early 1900 illustrations. And then it's just one word on each page, but it goes through multiple words. This is, sorry, the Alphabet Book. I can't remember if I mentioned that, but it goes through multiple words words with each of those letters so that's really nice so it's great for like a really 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 young child if you're just introducing letters and sounds for the first time or with an older child that you want to maybe use this to encourage some spelling or just the word of the day or something like that i think that it would work for multiple reasons all right so the next thing i want to show you is the beeswax that i got from waldorf supplies now child's dream didn't have the beeswax and i did buy beeswax from amazon and so now that i have three different beeswax beeswax I can I'm smelling it I can compare um, I put this one at like second place uh, ones that I got from Amazon were they were fine just not great there was one that I got from Amazon that is actually from like a little company in California it's called Topanga and it was amazing it's like amazing amazing like the best 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 beeswax I've ever smelled and used. And so I did want to try this out, but I am not going to buy any other beeswax except for Topanga Canyon, or maybe it's just Topanga uh, beeswax. It was so amazing, so smooth, so nice smelling. This smells nice. I, you know, it doesn't have that smoky smell. I guess once I melt it, I'll be able to tell you better how it smells. This smells lovely, just nowhere near as awesome as the one that I got from Topanga. So I just, I wanted to mention that. So I got three pounds of beeswax and then I also got these precision scissors because we're going to be doing some embroidery work this year and I did buy some embroidery floss, but I have to say that I'm, I, this, it's nice. It's really nice, but it's not what I expected, I think. And I'm really not that familiar with embroidery floss, but I believe there's another one by DMC that's, a, that's not plied maybe. I, I'm really sorry that I don't know more about this to explain why I don't like this as much as some of the other flosses that I got, but this is cotton floss. So this is a really nice quality floss. This wasn't cheap. I don't remember the prices, but I'll link the vendor down below so that you can check it out. I'm going to show you the other colors that I got as well. All right, so I went ahead and I got a variety of colors, and this is for a project that I want to do uh, with an embroidered ball that you, you first you felt a ball and then you can embroider it. So I also have some embroidery needles in here. I also have this Lyra blending uh, pencil. And so that is something else we got from Walter Supplies. All right, so first I want to show you some of the yarn that I got. And I am... I'm disappointed that I got this one and the yarn is probably fine, but I remember getting it a year ago, maybe, or maybe even more. And once I got it, it this is a lot, it feels a lot more rough than Lamb's Pride. Lamb's Pride is so soft and I usually get Lamb's Pride, but I thought I would try a different type of yarn and I really, really don't like this one. It's probably fantastic yarn. I simply don't like it. <laughs> so I got the primary colors and I will either um, pass this on to somebody else or return it or maybe let the kids do some simple knitting projects with it. But <laughs> I'm really a big fan of Lamb's Pride. But I, so I got the three colors and I, they look like they're totally hand dyed. They're, they're, they're beautiful. Just totally not what I wanted at all. Um, and I just kind of, it slipped my mind that I had already gotten this and I had passed it on right away because I'm like, this is just not what I wanted. But I did get three of the undyed all natural ones so that we could do some of our own dyeing. So I will keep these ones to do our own dyeing. But in the future, I'm going to go back to a child's dream to get some of the um, undyed wool yarn from a child's dream because I have it. Mm, by the way, this smells very like, very natural, very much like animal. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to go back to a child's dream and get some of the other ones, but I did uh, want to show you these and mention that 
uh, you know, there are other options out there and it's just not my favorite. All right, so I wanna show you some of the books that we got. This one is on knitted animals and I thought this would be a great resource for some of the projects that we wanna do this year. Oh, they're beautiful. This is great, because it looks like it's pretty simple. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I mean, I say it's pretty simple. I'm a novice knitter always, <laughs> so I need all the help I can get. So this is uh, this is a book for, um, again, music is like the, my, I just don't know anything about music, but I am really excited that all of these have CDs so that at least we can try to add a little bit more singing into our homeschool and we can be helped along with the CD. So all of these parent teacher resource songbook with the CD and this is um, this is the way we wash a day and this is primarily for my uh, my seven year old and I kind of wish that I had done this with her when she was younger like four or five but uh, I think that she'll still really enjoy it uh, at this age. And then this one is on the seasons and again it comes with the CD which is just awesome. All right, so we also got some Lyra color pencils. Uh, we the the problem with color pencils in our family is that we'll go through like the blues and greens and browns and a little bit of the reds right away and then we'll end up with a bunch of pinks and purples and so while we still have some color pencils actually we still have a lot but from the Lyra we we still have some but we need to replenish those earthy tones pretty often. All right, so I also got for the first time some cross stitch fabric, I think. I don't know anything about cross stitch. This is brand new to me and I missed doing this with my 11 year old when he was in fourth grade. And so I am going to be doing that now. And that's also why I got the embroidery floss. So I will definitely let you know how that goes. I also got some paper. I really, really like the paper, that paper scissors stone, which is Waldorf supplies, the ones that they carry. And this is 50 sheets of 11 by uh, 15 uh, inch paper. This is by Fabriano, which is a brand that I really, really like. I also got some new main lesson books in the three primary colors, although this looks a little bit more turquoise than blue, but these are for my seven-year-old daughter. So these are nice and large, and this is a great size for her. She'll be, uh, she's seven, so this is a good size for her main lessons for this year. Uh, okay, I also got like, oh, this is like the awesomest. That's a word, trust me. Uh, this is the best paper. This is the watercolor paper. This is we, this is 50, 50 sheets. It is by Strathmore. This is 15 inch by 22 inches. And I use this paper for our wet on wet watercoloring. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you is the watercolor boards. And these are gorgeous, but they are super expensive. So you can definitely go for a, a cheaper alternative. These ones were $25, but they are, they're really lovely, nice wood. They're already sealed. And so you would put your watercolor paper down, you'd tape off the edges and you'd be ready to go. Really, really beautiful. All right, the last couple things I wanna show you are from Dick Blick and they are, uh, mostly replenishing supplies. And so this is the uh, chalk pastels. It's a different packaging, so I really, really hope that they are the same. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna have to, I'm actually not sure. I'm gonna have to look into that because the packaging on our current Sergeant Art chalk pastels are a little bit different. So I really, really hope this is the one that I was thinking I was ordering. I also got like the grays and I also got the landscape ones because again, those are the ones that we use the most and then we end up with a lot of pinks and purples and that's like not that um, helpful. We also got some artist tape and this is to tape down the watercolor paper onto the boards that we're working with. And we don't typically watercolor that way, but this year I thought that we would try it that way. And then some of the Sculpey Ultralight Oven Baked Clay, we've used this for projects last year, especially with our butterfly unit, and we really, really liked it. So I went ahead and I got some more. We also have some wood glue, and I have the wood glue for these dowels, and this is so that we can DIY our own knitting needles. And then at the top, we can add like a little decorative piece, and I thought that we could make that out of the oven baked clay so that, you know, you're 
your work doesn't fall off the end of your knitting needle. And then if we need to, we would have the wood glue to glue it on. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you is this paper here. And I have never used this paper before. This is stipple paper. And I am honestly not remembering why I got this paper. But I got a lot of other paper from Dick Blick as well, a lot of a variety of watercolor paper that I intended to try out with the kids and see which one would work best for our needs. Um, but that has not come yet. And so I will have a follow up video on the other things that we purchased. All right. So uh, don't forget to check the description box below for more information on the products that we are using this year with our homeschool, as well as the other videos that I mentioned. And don't forget that if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis in our homeschool, you guessed it. You can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.